welcome to today's lecture and for today we are looking at a new model that's our model 3 and the title of the model is rudiments of dispensing my name is Pam McBequin a lecturer at Ferguson Cells College now this model forms the foundation of an MC work in assisting the pharmacist okay in the dispensing of medication to patients if you're able to work in a pharmacy to assist the pharmacist, then it's very important that you be able to understand this lecture. Because the pharmacy is the first line of defense to prevent tragic mistakes that could cost a patient their life, an understanding of this model is key, okay? For us to understand, it's very, very, very important because if you don't, you may put the life of the patient at risk. Now, for the module two, before we even start today's lecture, let's look at what we should be expecting. And this model is going to take us for almost a month or so before we'll be finishing. So somewhere um, mid-August, okay, to the end of August, you are going to finish the model. It's a very big model, all right? So we have to take a lot of time. Now, it has been divided into two parts, dispensing one and dispensing two. Either the dispensing one, look at what a medicine is, okay? We also look at introduction to rational use of medicines or what's called rational medicine use. Okay, why should we use medicines with care? And then we look at common patterns of inappropriate medicine use. Most people will come to your pharmacy and the medicines they are requesting for, we are not supposed to sell to them. Okay, so at the end of that lecture, you understand what are the basic precautions in medicine use. Okay, before you give a medicine to any patient, what are some of the precautions or why you're supposed to be careful okay before you give the medicine then we have commonly misused and abused medicines in ghana we look at it and how do we stop it then what will be the consequence when somebody takes too much of the medicine that's overdose or too little that is underdosing we also look at how to handle unwholesome deteriorated and expired medicines okay medicines that are not good or they are deteriorated okay or they have expired how are we supposed to handle it? Then we look at common dosage forms, the applications and uses. And we'll talk about dosage forms, we'll talk about the form in which the medicine comes, okay, like tablets, capsules, syrups, mixtures, suspensions. So when you get to that lecture too, we are going to be looking at the common dosage forms and how they are supposed to be used. Then we we'll look at proprietary and generic preparations. Okay, proprietary talks about products that company have manufactured, okay, like F pack, okay. F pack is a pricey product. Um, Antimary is a pricey product. Um, a lot of medicines we know, okay. Lunat is a pricey product, and generic product. What's the difference? Then we we'll look at prescription appreciation, and it's important for us to be able to read the prescriptions when the patients come to our pharmacy with them. All right, that is key. Okay, so how do we know the abbreviations the doctor write? They are handwriting. How do we read it? And at this model, we are going to study how to read prescriptions and also how to calculate okay, prescriptions. Then under dispensing too, we look at the supply of over-the-counter drugs. We look at labeling appreciation, how we're supposed to write labels. Then we look at suitability of containers for the medications that we pack for our patients. Then we'll finish the lecture off with appreciation of feedback from patients. Okay. Also, we are going to look at drug measurements, okay? And under the drug measurements, we look at the basic concepts of drug measurements. There are a lot of uh, words to be hearing, like milligrams, milliliters, kilograms, okay? How are we supposed to understand this? Then we look at dispensing equipment, okay? These are equipments or basically uh, kits or things that help us to dispense the medicine to the patient. We look at weight measurements then the last thing will be on the volume measurement so basically this is what we'll be expecting in modern as i've said it's quite loaded all right i'll take my time to explain for us to understand and as i've always said if you don't understand anything you can um, send me a private message on my whatsapp number then i'll do further explanations for you for today's lecture, let's first talk with about medicines, and that's what today we'll be concentrating on. All right. So first, we got the definition of a medicine, and I'm sure you've taken a medicine before. We've all taken medicines before. All right. So what is a medicine? 
A medicine is any substance prescribed to cure, manage, prevent, mitigate, or diagnose an illness. Conditions with cure means that the disease can be eradicated, okay, by taking medicines. Example, malaria can be cured. So when you take your lunat, you are curing malaria. Typhoid people can be cured when they give you an antibiotic. Candidiasis, or what we call white, okay, can also be cured when you take your medicines. Now, conditions we manage, conditions we manage, all right, conditions we, the conditions we manage normally are those that the patient may live with it for the rest of their life, okay, and should take these medicines to bring the condition under control, okay, like hypertension, if you have hypertension, normally we mismanage for life, asthma, diabetes, sickle cell disorder, HIV is so we call these conditions normally chronic conditions all right and and we give medicines so that the patient doesn't get worse so we see we manage these conditions now conditions we can also use medicines to prevent include pregnancy okay where you're using the oral contraceptive to secure lydia uh, postnatal two all right malaria can also be prevented in the pregnant women there's a medicine we call sulfadoxin pyrimetamin okay as part it's called SP for short. So, paradoxic parameter, men. We give it to the pregnant women after the assisting with gestation to prevent them from getting malaria. Polio, measles, tuberculosis in Ghana, we immunize like six child killer diseases. Okay, we give immunization shots where the conditions are not able to come in future. Now, when it comes to conditions that can be mitigated. To mitigate something means to lessen the severity of the condition or to make it less severe. An example is patient with chronic pain at their back, like back pain, wrist pain, knee pain. Sometimes can even be because of arthritis. Okay, we give them pain less and medicine to reduce the pain and Im improve on their quality of life. So you see we are mitigating. To diagnose means to come to a conclusion as to what is wrong with the patient, all right? So some medicines, are also given to help the doctor or the lab technician to diagnose certain conditions. Example, there is a medicine called Birion Mail. It is given for patients to drink, okay, and this is normally patient with uh, either peptic ulcers, okay, uh, sore in their stomach, or their intestines are blocked, it's called intestinal obstruction. All right, so when they drink this meal and they take an x tray, they're able to see where the problem really lies. Now, how do medicines work? Now, medicines can be used to treat both infectious and non-infectious diseases. Now, when you say infectious diseases, example is this COVID-19 you are facing, it's infectious, okay? Malaria is an infectious disease, typhoid is caused by an infection, okay? So, any disease that are caused by a germ or germs is called infectious diseases. So, we can see, for example, white is an infectious disease, okay? Because it's an infection, it's caused by germs. Then we have diseases, we call them non-infectious diseases. Non-infectious diseases are diseases that are not caused by germs, but they are caused because either part of our body or, or soul is not working in, uh, working well. And why it's not working well, that whole body suffers, all right? So assuming somebody has gotten hypertension, possibly the heart or the blood volume or the blood vessels is having a problem. If somebody is having diabetes, the insulin that's supposed to be secreted by the pancreas, okay, is not adequate or not enough, or the pancreas is not even secreting at all. So those conditions are called non-infectious diseases. And medicines we use for non-infectious diseases work by altering or changing the way the human body is functioning, or the physiology of the body. Okay. Now I know physiology will be a new term with you, but it is not anything big. Okay. So when you talk about physio, physio, okay, it's talking about function. Okay. It's talking about basically about fancy logic is about study okay so biology study of living things okay astronomy okay all the logic logic logics are talking about study the physiology basically means the study of the body functions all right so let's not be scared it's very easy all right so when you see that medicines when taken into or applied to the body produce a physiological effect on the body Okay, and basically, I said physiology means function in the body. All right, so physiological effect means that the medicine changed the abnormal functioning of the body, making the patients feel better. So, for example, if a patient is coughing and you buy a cough mixture, 
the cough measured changes the abnormality of the cough, then the patient can now feel better where the cough goes on its own or away. Now let's basically know some of these terms, all right? I'll be introducing you gradually to it. Now there are some class of medicines for non infectious disease that are very common. Patients that are having hypertension, okay, uh, high blood pressure, sometimes that's how we call it, high blood pressure, they take medicines called antihypertensives, antihypertensive drugs. I can see that we just brought the anti, anti means against hypertension. Okay, so when you say somebody is an anti something, okay, antichrist, anti something means they're against. All right, so it's, a, it's, a, it's derived from the Latin word, okay, so anti hypertensives. Uh, medicines used to treat hypertension or reduce blood uh, pressure. Then we have diabetes, we give anti diabetic drugs, then cancer, anti cancer drugs. Asthma, we give anti asthmatic drugs. Pain, we give analgesics. Okay, analgesics. Okay, then constipation, laxity. These are just a few examples that I'm giving. All right. So later on, I'll be giving you an assignment where I'll ask you to give me uh, examples of anti hypertensive drugs and anti diabetic drugs. Okay, when you walk into any pharmacy, you can get this this for me, please. I don't just want you to Google. Okay, go to a pharmacy and ask them. All right, and, and, and send it to me. And at the end of the lecture, I have I've typed those questions. We don't know, don't worry now. Go to the lecture. When we finish, you'll be able to do that assignment. Now, let's watch a short video. Now, this video that we are watching is about asthma. And I just want to use this video to explain to you how medicines that we use to treat asthma work. Okay, it's very, very simple. Now, this is inside the human lungs, okay? And this pipe you are seeing is where the air passes into the human lungs. So, this person is having a problem with asthma, comes to the hospital, then we prescribe them some medications to be used to manage asthma. Asthma is an inflammatory condition. When you say something is inflammatory, okay, it means that it's a reaction that goes on uh, from the body's immune system. When the person breathes in dust or there is a strong chemical or perfume or something. The way their body reacts is different from the way a normal person's body reacts. And this person is going to have a problem breathing, okay? So we are going straight to the lungs. Now, when it comes to the person's lung, look at what is happening. Okay, so this should be the normal thing. But with this person, I've just breathed in some strong perfume or chemical. So inside the body, you can see that the immune system has started reacting, okay? And it's producing a lot of chemicals and this chemical that is producing pushes a lot of mucus okay phlegm into the lungs you can see the picture there and once there's a lot of phlegm into the lungs the patient cannot breathe now when we are using asthmatic medicines okay asthmatic medicines basically work when the patients breathe the medicine okay you can see the medicine flowing through this medicine comes into the lungs straight into the lungs okay when the medicine gets into the lungs, the medicine now produces a physiological change. It changes the way the body is working. Okay, so the mucus that we are seeing now, this is back into the lungs. The mucus that we are seeing where it was not causing the patient to breathe, the air waves where the air is passing has become smaller. When the medicine enters, you can see the medicine entering, the yellow shiny things. You see. Then when the medicine enters, it goes straight into the inflammation we talked earlier on, okay? So it reacts with a chemical inside the lungs. Then it's able to reverse the problem that was occurring. So this patient that couldn't uh, breathe and is coughing a lot of phlegm, you can see the whole lungs is now drying out beautifully and it's opening up for fresh air to enter, okay? So basically that is how asthmatic medicines work. So assuming you have a patient that comes to a pharmacy and wants to buy a medicine meant for asthma we can easily explain it this way to the patient and the patient will understand you can see the medicine is the pink one covering and it's opening up or and the names of some of this medicine is what we have seen on the screen bitter agonist and anticholinergics okay all right so for patients with asthma that is how it is it works so we just saw how medicines that are used for non-infectious disease but now let's look at anti-infectives as i said earlier on these are medicines used to treat infections okay or used to treat infections and they work by 
either killing you see sidal like suicidal when you hear the word sidal sidal means killing okay so either killing or stopping we call it static stopping the microorganism or the pathogen or the germs in or on the body that may be causing the abnormal functioning of the body so let's say somebody gets malaria there's a parasite called the plasmodium parasite which when it enters your body makes you feel weak you vomit uh, you throw up your body temperature goes up destroys your blood your red blood cells if you are not careful it can kill you all right so when somebody take a medicine that is let's say an anti-malaria or when somebody go to the pharmacy and buy an antibiotic like amosacillin okay these medicines for them to be effective one must take all the prescribed dose and the at the specified time for the correct duration so assuming you are supposed to take two tablets three times a day for five days it is important the patient takes all all right and this is because of how the medicines work now if you see the diagram from one that's where the infection is and when the infection has come we come to two where the patient have taken the medicine now when you take the medicine they are two main categories of the gems we have three and three a the three is a correct medicine all right so once we give the correct medicine to the patient okay the antibiotic cause cell deterioration okay in the gems okay and it kills the gems so you can see the cell is destroyed however assuming you take the antibiotic for the wrong organism nothing will happen so this is very important we understand let's say a lady have gotten white and they go to the pharmacy and they buy flagell flagell is not meant for white it's meant for bacterial vaginosis so assuming you take flagell for white what is happening is the nothing is happening to the fungal that is causing it okay nothing is going to happen to it so it is important that anytime an antibiotic is being given the patient goes to the hospital either we'll do a lab test for us to know the correct antibiotic to give so that we can kill the type of infection okay or the type of germs causing that infection all right so three is the correct one three a means that the wrong medicine was given and the germ will still be there nothing will happen to it at all now when we talk about these anti-infectives let's get a few of them okay so we have medicines used for viral infections like covid and all those hiv aids uh, any infection that is viral normally we don't treat but there are some we treat we call those medicines antiviral drugs. Medicine we use for bacterial infections, okay, bacterial infections. We call them antibiotics, antibiotics, okay. An example is plenty like amosacillin, and I'll give you an assignment, so I'll not mention plenty. Okay, I want you to do it, all right. Medicines we use for fungal infections, okay, fungal infections. We call them antifungals. A medicine we use for protozoal infections. An example of protozoa is what causes malaria, okay, plasmodium parasite. It's called an antiprotozoa. Now, for a lot of these things I'm mentioning, don't worry about it. When we start model four, I'm come to details about this because we'll be learning the diseases. I just brought this slide because we are learning about medicines. You know the classes of medicines, all right? And these are a few of them that I've said. And as I've said, you can visit any nearby pharmacy, okay, if you you feel shy to go to any pharmacy you can come to our pharmacy at achimota okay or the one at israel uh, a large israel close to alumnava campus or we have one pharmacy at kwabinya you can come there and find some of these medicines there okay and i think you better learn even though we are in this period i think i still think you go out so you can find some of these medicines now when Patients take medicines, as I've said earlier, the medicines cause what we call changes to the body. Okay, that's what we call physiology. Now, these physiological changes are two main types. Okay, one is called the local effects and one is called the systemic effects. It is important we understand this so that when a patient comes to our pharmacy and we don't have one brand of a medicine, we should be careful not to just change it unless you call the doctor. So let's say a local effect of a drug is uh, said to produce uh, when the effect of the medicine is observed at or close to the site of application of the drug all right so when you say a medicine is producing a local effect where the medicine was applied okay or close to where the medicine is applied that is the only place we see the effect of the medicine so i have shown some pictures down and i'll be showing you more 
all right so assuming somebody takes an eye drop okay an eye drop or an eye instrument like the picture we are seeing and let's say that the both eyes have, uh, have gotten an infection or is pain in this patient and this patient put the eye drop only in one eye and not on the other eye the eye that she has placed the eye drop on will only be the eye that the infection will be treated all right why because eye drops and all those things are producing a local effect they don't enter the blood to produce any effect okay so wherever you apply the medicine that is the site where it's going to apply now the same for ear drops so so ointments cream gels lotions and goggles and eye ointments all work with what we call the local effect the local effect other examples is what we are seeing here like suppositories and ointments that we apply to our skin all right so when somebody apply like uh, epidem cream solvers cream triple action cream to their skin normally where they apply the medicine is where they see the effect of the medicine okay if you don't apply it there you don't see it if a lady gets white and she inserts the pastry into the vagina it is where she has inserted that it works the pastry where she has inserted into the vagina do not work beyond the vagina this is very important why it is important to give a medicine that produces a local effect to a patient whose condition is limited to a small place on their body okay and it can easily be targeted or assessed so we reduce the side effects the patient may experience so assuming a patient have gotten a condition like this skin infection you are seeing here applied or intimate it just can be rich with the medicine you don't have to give them a medicine to swallow okay so that we can reduce the side effects normally when you apply this medicine you may have a side effect but this side effect is localized localized means that it's seen at only where the medicines was applied for example if a patient has white or vaginal trash a pastry is recommended okay that will work only in the vagina to cure the infection now assuming this patient want to take a tablet or a capsule and swallow okay this will cause a lot of other side effects than just inserting their vaginal pastry when you talk about systemic effects systemic effects are the physiological changes okay of a drug that comes about only after the drug has entered the bloodstream only where the drug has entered the bloodstream this effect may be felt throughout the entire body okay because there's blood everywhere and wherever there's blood normally we will find the medicine so assuming that i'm having a headache and i buy price stomach and i take price stomach immediately i swallow it it goes into my stomach it dissolves come into my small intestines absorbed into my blood every part of my body there will be price stomach even though i'm having headache there will be price stomach in my legs in my hands in my mouth in my kidneys in my lungs everywhere price stomach will go all right so if a patient for example is also suffering from high blood pressure okay this is a cardiovascular system problem cardio means heart vascular means the blood vessels okay now the medicine is given uh, um, orally okay that is they are swallowing the medicine or it's injected into their bloodstream to be carried to the heart the blood vessels or to reduce the blood volume bringing the blood pressure down all right so medicines that when we swallow or when we give we are giving injections the side effect is more because it affects all parts of the body every part like the picture you are seeing all right don't worry about the writings i i the diagram really i want us to concentrate on so you can see the heart stop there you can see the stomach the intestines the uterus this is a lady okay now if this person takes anti-hypertensive drug this drug affects every system okay every system however sometimes we don't have any choice than to give the systemic medicines because if a patient is having a problem with their heart we cannot apply anointment the only thing we can do is to allow the blood to take the medicine to the heart so that the effect will be produced and that's why i said earlier please medicines that are normally creams or intimate gels suppositories most of them are producing local effects medicines that normally comes as syrups tablets capsules injections okay infusions what we call drips normally produce a systemic effect before you swallow any medicine please be careful why because even though you are taking the medicine let's say lydia okay contraceptive 
so that you don't become pregnant. The lydia contraceptive is going to affect your liver. The lydia contraceptive will affect your heart. The lydia contraceptive will affect your lungs. Why? Because the lydia is going to produce what we call a systemic effect. Now, before we bring today's lecture to an end, let's look at how medicines are manufactured, okay? And because it's your first day at Model 3, I don't want to pack it too much after this lecture, then we'll call it a day. So what are the constituents of medicines? I, I think you might have wondered, how do we manufacture medicines like Pristamol? How, how do, did we do it? Okay, when we did Model 1, we learned about how medicines were discovered, and I hope you still remember by accident and all those things. In this model, we are going a little bit deeper. Medicines are made up of two main parts. The first part is called the active substance or the active pharmaceutical ingredient, normally called the API. Then we have another part of the medicine called the inactive substance or the excipient. So medicines have gotten to the active substance or the active pharmaceutical substance and the inactive substance or the excipients. All right. Now, when we talk about the active substance is the drug itself okay which produces the changes to the functions of the body or causes the physiological change what we say is, is simple let me use a scenario so that we understand it's like going to watch a football game all right and uh, let's say ghana versus nigeria now the players on the pack are the active substances because they are the ones that you are going to cause the main uh, results that we want those of us sitting in the stands, the spectators, we are called the inactive substance or the recipients. Why? Because we are not contributing anything to the game than just giving fans to make the stadium lively. Okay, so the active substance, normally every medicine is named after the active substance. So when you have a tablet of Pristamol, it's not everything inside that tablet that is Pristamol, no. It's Pristamol tablet contains starch, we add color, we add other chemicals to it. But because Pristamol is the most important part of the medicine, the whole tablet is called Pristamol tablet. All right. So it, is, it is the most important part of the medicine. The active substance is the most important part of the medicine. And normally, as I said, the medicine is named after its active substance. It's just an example that I'm giving. Okay. And later, we are going to go deeper into it. Now, when you say the inactive substance, as I said earlier on, it is the vehicle. When you say something is a vehicle, a vehicle is any medium of transport, okay? So we know our normal vehicle. If you are moving from Accra to Kumasi, we will sit in a car. So a car becomes a vehicle. An aeroplane is a vehicle, all right? So if I want Pristamol to enter the body, Pristamol cannot just enter. Pristamol need a vehicle. So I can put Pristamol into a tablet. So here, a tablet... Uh, uh, recipients, the starch and everything helps price the more becomes a vehicle, okay, or a medium that helps the drug to get to where it's supposed to go, okay, or its site of action, okay. Now, pharmaceutical excipients are crucial to drug delivery, even though I've said that they don't produce any effects. It is difficult for us to take the medicines. Without them, let me give a, a typical example before we continue our lecture. Now, assuming I ask you to prepare palm nut soup, abengwine, okay, what is the active ingredient in abengwine? What do you think the most important ingredient that without which you cannot prepare the abengwine? Uh huh. All right. So you are right. It is palm nuts, abe. All right. However, if I ask you to prepare the palm nut soup, abengwine, and you just pound the palm nuts, squeeze the juice out, and do the soup. Okay, with just water. There is no salt, there is no pepper, there is no tomatoes, there is no fish, there is no beef, there is no meat, there is no onions, and all those things inside. <laughs> I think you are just a pear palm nut oil. It's not. It's no more soup. All right. But when you have all the other ingredients, the excipients, even though they are not the main thing, the tomatoes, the onions, the pepper, the garlic the the meats uh, the kutuji and all those things inside the food it makes the food delicious all right so the other things i've mentioned aside the palm nuts are called the excipients okay 
So generally, an SPCPS has no medical or medicinal properties. They don't have any medicinal property. They don't cure any disease. Okay, and after this lecture, we'll be manufacturing one medicine here on today's lecture. All right, so let's be patient. You understand. It's a very easy lecture. All right, so SPCPS have no medicinal properties. It is standard. It's standard supposed is to streamline the manufacture of the drug product and ultimately facilitate physiological absorption of the drug. That's what they do. They are supposed to help in production so that the medicine can get to its site of action. A CPS might aid in lubricity, when you say lubricity, to lubricate, okay, to make sure that the medicine can easily go like the paracetamol suppository. If they have inserted some into a baby's anus or a child's anus, if you have inserted some before, you know, okay, the oily substance makes it easier for us to insert it. It helps the medicine to flow, flowability. It helps to break down. Like when you swallow a tablet like paracetamol, it should break down before your body can absorb, all right? So that's what we call disintegration. Breaking the medicine down is called disintegration, okay? A CPN cell with a taste, so sugar can be added to medicines, okay? A lot of blood tonics we are buying, there's a lot of sugar. Okay, and sugar is an excipient, okay, to improve on the taste and may confer some form of antimicrobial function, okay. And this I'm calling preservatives, okay, preservatives normally will make sure that the medicine doesn't get spoiled, all right. So this is what we mean by an excipient. Now, let's say that we want to prepare, prepare these lozenges, okay. So let me call it ginger lozenges and we want to repair it. Now, how do we repair these ginger lozenges? We just want to try our, our lesson. Now, if you, we are saying that this lozenges is ginger lozenges for sore throat, the active ingredient obviously is going to be ginger. So I have my ginger. You can see I've powdered my ginger into a bowl. Okay, but if I give you ginger just to be licking, you'll not be happy with me, right? Uh huh. Because it's going to be something, always taking raw ginger. So what do we do? We can decide to flavor the ginger with sugar, okay? And we are forming, don't forget, we are forming a lozenges, okay, like strepsils or tom tom or a homeka ginger, okay, just, just like a toffee, all right? So we need some things to do with, to have my powdered ginger, dry powdered ginger, I have my sugar ready, okay? I have my molds, okay? What you see down there is called a mold. When we finish melting everything, we pour it inside and we get a beautiful round shape that we want. Then I'll use a blue color because I want to color my, my ginger lot and just blue so that it becomes unique. After doing all this, I'll now melt my sugar. Okay, I'll put a, a pan on my gas stove. Then I'll melt, melt the sugar. Okay, I don't want the sugar to be very, very dark and brown, to be very bitter. So a little heat whilst I stir, no water is added to it. Okay, if you add water, you have destroyed the whole medicine. So I start add the sugar into the bowl the correct amount that I've weighed and measured into the bowl and I'll stir gradually. When it has turned liquid, okay, as it is still hot, I'll add my powder. If you wait for it to be cold, it will form the, the lozenge to be, become very hard. You can't use it, all right? So once it's hot, I add my powder, I stir. Then after stirring, you can see the spoon that I've placed there. I've gotten now the ginger mixed with the sugar, okay, that I've melted. Then I add my blue color, okay, it's a food color, very, the people, the caterers use a lot. I add my food color to the, the, the syrup I have melted on fire, then the whole solution become blue. Then, as it is still hot, I'll pour it into my mold so that I get the round shape. You can see the last time on, on your right, you can see that we are pouring the melted um, um, sugar that have gotten the ginger mixed into the molds okay and after i finish i wait for it to cool okay and after i've cooled it look at what we've had a beautiful lozenges this is how medicines are formed okay and you can see so going back let's just go back let's just go back so that we see something going back if i ask you that what is your active ingredient what is your active ingredient write it down it's not part of your assignment but i can send me to here what is the active ingredient and what is the excipient that was used in manufacturing a beautiful uh, ginger lozenges okay so this one please i'm saying that it's not part of your assignment but tell me i'm interested what is the active ingredient that ginger lozenges and what is the excipient what excipient did we use to form the ginger lozenges all right 
So thank you very much. We'll end today's lecture here. So please answer these questions and send it to my WhatsApp uh, my email address macbaquin4 at yahoo.com. Please make sure you send this lecture. Um, it's very important that you understand. Okay, so what is the medicine? Stage 5 diseases that can be treated and the medicines that are used for their treatment. Okay, so you write the disease and the medicine we used. Okay. Then we come to um, how, how, sorry, please let me correct it, it's not who. Okay, then I want you to tell me how do antibiotics work? How do antibiotics work? Okay, also what is the difference between systemic and local effects of medicines? Okay, what's the difference between the two? It's important, I want to know whether you understood it. Also, what is the difference between an active pharmaceutical ingredient and excipient? What is the difference between the two? Then, how will you make a ginger syrup? We just talked about ginger lozenges, okay? But assuming you want to make a ginger syrup, okay, maybe for cough. I'm interested. Just try. Yes, sir. We are just trying. Okay, how will you make a ginger syrup? Then, the next question that we'll be talking about is, give me five examples of each of the following classes of medicines, okay? And this is why I say that you can try to visit a pharmacy, ask them that can they help you with the five examples of antihypertensive medicines, medicines we use to treat hypertension, five examples of anti-diabetic medicines, five examples of anti-malarials they have in your pharmacy, antibiotics they have, antifungal drug they have. Okay, you write the examples. Please, you can snap the pictures for your personal use. Just type the names for me. Okay, the last one, and I said this one. Okay, state the active pharmaceutical ingredient. We call it API. State the active pharmaceutical ingredient. And the excipient we used in forming our ginger lozenge, our ginger lozenge, which we just formed in this presentation. All right, so this is your assignment. Please do it and send it to my email. Okay, before God willing, our lecture on Friday. If you have any questions, okay, you can ask me. God willing, I'll open your WhatsApp platform, possibly on thursday please if i don't uh, your class prefect uh, should remind me okay then i'll open the platform we can have a discussion on this lecture then we'll be expecting another lecture on friday thank you very much for listening to the lecture stay blessed and keep yourself yourself safe all right bye bye